it's not uh, other than the fact that I shouldn't have given a um, extra credit this average was pretty high um, what I was looking for here in Medcap's law was something start with something that's n squared and most of you got this if you have n nodes there are n times n minus one over two different node to node connections uh, now you could say value is is data and then make the further assumption the bandwidth between all nodes are equal and constant uh, that would have worked as well so if you say the value was node a connecting to node b that's the thing that has dollar signs and and i and, and whenever i do stuff i want units okay so the units of value are are dollars okay so there's a dollar value to connect node a to node b and then you got n times n minus one over two um yeah i gave i went back and gave uh, three of you put firm for f i assume you knew what the right answer was but i was uh, was looking for your understanding that in a firm real time you can allow packets to show up late uh but if they show up too late they have no value and that was d and not f and i just assume those of you got got that wrong just didn't understand the question of what time zero meant. Um, so I took the half the blame on that one. Uh, this one you got right. That one you got right. Too. This one. Yeah, this is I probably this is probably inappropriate for a grad class to give a number like this where you can't get any points if you mess up the units. Um, the way I did this one was to look up an example IR, you know, there was, you know, whatever, 940 nanometers in the lectures, and that was like 317. Uh, yeah, you all got this right. This is, uh, this has to do with the, obviously you got to do the, the passive pull up. Um, again, those of you who didn't get it fully right may not have understood the question, okay? And I guess it could have said the bit rate was 400 and the actual bit rate is 300. So um, some of you got confused and I meant bit rate to baud rate. I mean, bit rate to bandwidth. I did not mean overhead. I mean, it actually runs to 300 kilohertz. Oh uh, boy. Uh, I'm gonna teach you how to do this one today. Um, yeah. Um, I, I still like the question. I think uh, if I had to do this again, <clears throat> I would say uh, in option one, how could you change sampling so the noises are uncorrelated? Okay, so that's that would have been a better question rather than develop a technique. It's develop a technique to sample uh, and, you know, rather than going into a long diatribe about a 60 hertz notch filter or whatever um which solves the problem so you got credit for 60 hertz notch filtering but what i was looking for you was a way to uh, change sampling so the noise is uncorrelated uh the other thing about this as long as the as long as the sampling rate uh is not a multiple of 60 hertz it actually already will go to mu so uh, that's the other observation one could have made is to choose a sampling rate not a multiple of 60 hertz and then it will it'll basically systematically go through the sine wave uh, such that the sum of that will eventually be zero um, so option one, you could have just said sample at a rate that's not a multiple of 60. Or the other answer, the cool answer I was looking for was to sample at a random rate. So if you sample, if you randomly change the inner, uh, sort of violate all that is sampling uh, and just change the random sampling, uh, then the noise becomes uncorrelated. Um, and option two, I'm gonna do today. Show you how that works. Uh, you got this right uh, and then here 
Yeah, I was kind of, I was kind of <clears throat> underwhelmed with your answer here. Uh, I didn't get, didn't let anybody get over a hundred. So don't get, if I didn't give you very many points on this question, that's only because you were already at 99. Um, and I was underwhelmed with your response. I got a bunch of stuff that was in existence and I guess I, I should have re couched it and said, uh, yeah, uh, future. Yeah. Yeah. What, what inputs and outputs are we currently not measuring that we should be measuring? Uh, where should we put the IO devices that are not currently located, but should be? Uh, I was looking for more of a transformational answer. Um, next time I ask this type of question, I, I will make it perfectly clear that I don't want, I don't want, you know, I don't want the eye clicker or, yeah. The other thing that, that I would look for, if you think about things that are fully transformational, uh, you look for what is your outcome, okay? So uh, outcome of education is understanding, learning. And so uh, if you could create a device that would somehow in, improve learning, then, uh, you know, then it's transformational. Yeah. So anyway, I, uh, the question, the exam was too easy to have extra credit. Uh, go ahead. And, I mean, obviously everybody passed with a great grade. So it's, uh, I probably, uh, it's, uh, so can you continue to do the extra credit? Uh, yeah. Okay. So did you, um, those of you who, um, who are, who are in office hours, et cetera, did you know, did you find the Keyshawn question? All right, so which was the Keyshawn question? The one that you're very happy he added? Was it not the bonus? It was the bonus. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's definitely the bonus. Fine, so whatever, I don't, you know. <laughs> um, and you can argue for points on. Yeah, no, see, so, yeah, so, um, yeah, questions that I, the answers for the last question for me is uh, I would, uh, you know, I, I think it's probably marginally unethical, but I would I would implant um, uh, sensors in the brains of the children uh, and the teachers, by the way, uh, to make sure the teachers are working. Uh, I didn't know we were allowed to do that. Yeah, I was about to make a joke <laughs> about it, but I didn't know you'd be serious. Well, I, I mean, what I meant was I was looking for something transformational. All right, right? Ne um, ne next time you ask the question, just say yeah, you're yeah. free to ignore ethical constraints. Yeah. And and. The Geneva Conventions. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I almost put it in the thing, but I didn't want it to be in writing, right? You so can make I almost my, put that in my, um, yeah, down here. Right. I, I will make hive so, mind children armies next time. Well, okay, but don't Do kid yourself. Neural implants. Don't kid yourself. Uh, you know, you can ask um, Austin, but he's gonna try it so you know he's already designing a, a wireless Just, implant that will go under the oh, on top is it's and we have a surgeon over at Dell she's willing to suture it onto the skull so is this a uh, is super villain origin story or? yeah that's right that's right so but okay so what else what else is transformational uh You know, you think about it, how, you, how do you get information into the brain, right? We do it with our, with our eyes and our ears. Um, are there other, other, other learning modalities? Um, we, I, I did like the ones who wanted to, wanted to check for cheating. Okay, a couple of you uh, invented new ways to make sure kids weren't cheating. Uh, that, was, that, that was awesome. I like that. that was, that's kind of where I was going. Um, yeah, and I laughed at a couple. So they weren't all boring, I promise you, they weren't all boring. Uh, but you're grad students, you're supposed to, <sighs> okay, I don't know. Um, they all sound pretty boring compared to neural implants. Well, uh, or, 
Or well, what is it? You think about could you, yeah, could you, could you improve learning? Now the other thing that was sort of uh, missing from this was the whole internet part, right? How do we, you know? So now some people got, you know, they're going to track the kids on the playground, you know, with RFID trackers. That's okay. Um, to sort of watch. I mean, you you know this for a fact. Uh, you know, Google and Facebook and and all these, you know, Pokemon Go, these are all ways to observe, you know, Google Maps, ways to observe the, the sociological aspects of, of human behavior. And so uh, watching, watching kids interact in groups, whether they're playing on the playground, uh, you know, you know, that's something that's, you know, sort of, you know, sort of the, the, the topology, right? I mean, a boring topology is a teacher standing up in front of a blackboard and 50 kids sitting in their chair quietly, right? That's a boring topology. Um, but could you, could you connect people around the world to learn from each other? Anyway, yeah, fine. Yeah, I will. I will try to be more clear when I want something very specific. Okay, and so in that regard, the, the, the when I got answers I didn't want, it was probably because I didn't prompt you properly. So yeah, keep thinking weird. Um, yeah, here I have a just a short uh, update on one of the lab fours. Um, this is a um, a embedded device that will. That essentially a cell phone, but it will, when I'm done, send text messages and receive text messages. And so right now, it uh, I got it to connect to the to the cell phone tower, um, and it's got plenty of um, uh, you know plenty of okay that's that's battery life that's not uh, it's got plenty of, uh, of of signal strength. There, that's the. Uh, decibel signal strength uh, but it doesn't send text messages so but I'll, I'll fix it i'm just making progress okay um i'm going to um since i was like almost done with one of the slides i'm going to go ahead and finish it communication theory is that what it was no it's in the next one um no catalyst Oh, that was it. Yeah. We're like on the second to last slide. And it was just a, a summary slide that, um, the, no, that wasn't it. Okay. I looked it up on the other computer. Let's see. So it must be for technology. No, that's today's. Must have been that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. That, that just was it. I just I just didn't find it. Yeah. There we were. That's my little star. Let's me know that where where I was. Um, just as a as a reminder, we were basically looking at the fundamental differences between um, wideband, uh, which is the two point two and above gigahertz Bluetooth cell phone Wi Fi, uh, and the narrow band the sub gigahertz, um, the sub gigahertz, we were just sort of looking at some of the, some of the um, problems with, with, you know, uh, wireless communication and that was reflections. Uh, this delay spread is um, the time between the arrival of pulses from different paths. And with narrow band, they 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 show up to right, virtually on top of each other, but with wide band they spread such that there could be even outside the um, outside the pulse time, right? So 
Uh, this is especially true the longer you go, obviously, and the more more reflections they have. Um, and so this was just the generality from that chapter when he got to the end. Uh, what are the advantages of high frequency and low frequencies? Um, and high frequencies, uh, uh, because it's a higher frequency, it's a smaller wavelength, right? Which means the antenna is smaller. Because why are high frequencies? Okay, so let's do this. Uh, well, let's do this one by one. This is a true statement. Why? Why do lower frequencies have a greater penetration? Longer wavelength? Yeah, it's a longer wavelength. So the wavelength is larger than the size of the wall, and therefore it doesn't absorb or reflect. Okay? Um, uh, and these are all wavelength dependent. Uh, these are all wavelength dependent wise. Okay? Uh, larger wavelength. Uh, means it it doesn't reflect or absorb as much. Okay, uh, and we also saw that there was a frequency, a wavelength dependence on 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 loss. You know, the the airspace, the free space loss was also wavelength dependent. Okay, uh, why do uh, why do higher frequencies have more available bandwidth? Does it carry more data? That's the same thing, but why? Why can it carry more data? What equation lets you see which law, which of these laws in this section says a, if you increase the frequency, the bandwidth will go up? Uh, channel, the Shannon. Yeah, sure. Theory. Look, because how, um, how does the frequency affect this? How does the... How does the carrier? How does the carrier frequency, right? The the white the the the, the frequency affect this. The B term. B term. Yeah, you know, we're gonna send how many? You know, that's the that's the that's the carrier. That's the um that's the 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 we we'll see it in the next in the next lecture. But um, we're gonna send bits at a rate of the you know at a rate least related to the uh the, the the carrier frequency okay that's why that one's faster uh why is it isn't it because you can subdivide uh, i mean yes uh, but you're still putting but but if you subdivide a, a one one killer one kilohertz waveform you can't how many do you can't see yes there are multiple there are multi, multiple bands right multiple side bands which you can add to, but everything runs faster. Right? Can you give me if I double if I have a ten times the the anything I do at at one at hundred kilohertz, I can do ten times faster at a megahertz. But does that be the the like the um, like that's if I have friend. FM radio? Yeah, no, that's a B is the um, B is the uh, that's the bandwidth the, of my. Yes, but the, but. Okay, B is the bandwidth of the of the channel. That's how many pulses you're sending. That's the pulse frequency. So, but if my at okay at two point four gigahertz, I have more bandwidth in my channel than I do at at the nine hundred kilohertz. All right, there's more frequencies there. There's more bandwidth. If you think of band, and no matter how you define bandwidth, right? If you de define it this way, or yeah, if you define it this way here, <clears throat> is what is the range of frequencies? And I'm not saying B is exactly equal to 2.4 gigahertz, um, but I'm saying if you have a, a carrier frequency which is 10 times faster, you have the potential to have 10 times more bandwidth. Right, right, but the B in the Shannon equation is like for FM, it would be like fifteen kilohertz because that's like yeah, or it, it's it's the but it's 
the B is bandwidth. Don't 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 kid yourself. I mean, I don't I don't mean to confuse you. Um, and but the the more bandwidth you have, the the higher frequencies. Be, uh, for two two uh, two gigahertz plus or minus one percent is more bandwidth than a hundred kilohertz plus or minus one percent. There's more bandwidth. Ben. So the term that goes up in the in the in the information rate is the the increasing the frequency does bring along more bandwidth. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I, I didn't mean to overkill that. Uh, and higher frequencies need smaller antennas okay um again it's a wavelength thing all right um just because it came up and um um i added a lecture uh but it won't oh i should have saved it i don't matter i added a lecture but i won't quiz you on it but yeah, it's, uh, this was option option two. Um, Going to show you how to remove sixty hertz two ways. Um, Going to use the Z transform and show you both the uh, finite impulse response. And an infinite impulse response, and either this is really boring, infinite, or really boring. Uh, this this slide will be on the test, right? So whenever you sample uh, and now we are going to sample at a constant rate we are going to sample at a constant rate and this is our nyquist theorem um you know large large high frequency uh get aliased low amplitude this is the resolution of the ad converter Uh, with either in decibels or volts, depending upon how you do it. And obviously there's one half FS. So, um, but these are the approximations we made in the amplitude domain and the time domain when we sampled. Um, now you can have non-causal filters if you're analyzing data that's already been sampled and you're looking you know you've you've collected data in the past and you want to you know you want to interpret it you could have a non-causal filter that looked into the future uh, but in an embedded system like an iot device you're only going to be a function of the current sample and the previous samples And this is the, the previous outputs, the previous filters. Uh, there are some really cool nonlinear filtering, like the median and the squared and um, fuzzy logic was an example of a nonlinear filter. Um, uh, that performance map. So we've seen things already that were nonlinear. Fuzzy was nonlinear. Uh, the finite state machine was nonlinear. The performance maps. In other words, where you take inputs and you calculate outputs, and they're not a linear function of each other. Okay, uh, this is an example of a linear function because it is a linear combination of, in this case, the current sample and the sample three times ago. 
and I'm going to show you that at 360 hertz, this particular filter removes all 60 hertz. Okay. And then I'm going to show you at 240 hertz, this also notches 60 hertz. And this wasn't exactly the answer I was looking for on the quiz question, but some of you gave it to me, so I just thought the rest of you ought to know. Um, and basically, this is, uh, what is X sub N minus 2? What, two, two samples prior? Yeah, two samples prior. Okay, good. This is the current sample. That's two samples prior. What's this? The output of the two samples prior equation. Yeah, two, two, the output of the filter two times ago. Okay, it's causal, right? Because they're all going back in time. Um, if you were in 319K, what would you call this? What kind of math is this? Very hard. No. DSP? Well, no, no. This is, all, this is all DSP, yeah. But this is fixed point. Uh, right? There's no floating point in here. So... You can do this, you could do this on a microcontroller without a multiply instruction, okay? You don't need a multiply instruction to do this on a microcontroller. You don't need a divide instruction. So you certainly don't need floating point. Uh, that's my point of, of this particular thing is it's a very powerful signal processing process that doesn't require, now if you have a multiply, obviously, that's three multiplies, um, <clears throat> two adds, and a shift. Okay, pretty fast. Uh, the way to prove it is the Z transform. Uh, nobody actually cares about this equation except to know that the transform is indeed a transform. This is the time domain. It's not a continuous variable, it's a discrete variable. And this is the frequency domain. Um, and so all the things you can do in, uh, um, in the frequency domain, you can do with this transform. So we're going to do this analysis here. We're going to take a, we're going to take a set of, of discrete pre-sample data, run it through an equation to get a new sequence. And then we're going to analyze that by sort of converting the the filter into a into a a transform and then study this transform in terms of its frequency response we can also go the other way okay take a transform and create an equation so we'll go both ways in this in this analysis all right so you don't need to know this that's again the definition of the transform the one you got to know is this one okay and that is the transform of a, of a signal shifted in time is just z to the minus m times the thing, okay? So the, if, if, if x of n is transformed into capital X of z, okay, then x of n minus three is equal to z to the minus three times the capital X. That's the thing we gotta know. Okay, um, and this is the capital X here is the transform of little x. Okay. And then once we have an H, okay, we can do the usual gain, right? Once we have an H, uh, the usual gain. Now I said N was the, I said N was the time domain and Z was the frequency domain. But as you know, it's not all frequencies, right? It goes from minus one half FS to plus one half FS. That's the, that's the, because it's sampled, uh, it's limited to this range of frequencies, uh, which is basically what this equation is doing. Um, the equivalent value of Z is, is numbers on the unit circle in the complex plane. 
that is zero. This point right here is one quarter FS, which is Z equals I, or J, however you wanna do it, J. Yeah, I'm using J. And this right here is uh, Z equals one half FS, and that right here is minus one half FS. And this is minus one quarter FS right there, or minus J, okay? Uh, which is written like this is a complex number and yeah, gain in phase. So I'm gonna prove to you that this filter notches 60 Hertz, okay? And so if you take the transform of little y into big Y, little x into big X, transform is a linear function, so I transfer the plus into a plus and to divide by two and to divide by two, and the x of n minus three is that. I solve for h, and I get a fairly simple relationship. I plug z into here, and then I take the gain, right, there's my f right there, right, there's my f. And I get this curve, the, uh, where'd it go? Uh, the, um, the, 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 I get this one here, the, the triangles. And so if FS equals 360, then that point right there is 60 hertz. Uh, it turns out there's a whole lot of filters in this class, this one here. Uh, if you sum up the last n points and sample at a multiple of n times 60, then this filter also rejects 60 hertz. Um, that's this, that's a, here's an example. Uh, sum the last 60, I'm sorry, sum the last six points, uh, sample at 360. That's, this is n equals six. Uh, sample at um, 360 and you'll, you'll notch. You'll notch both 60 and cool enough. You'll also notch 120 and 180. So, um, they're easy to implement, you know, real easy to implement. Um, uh, if you want more Q, Q is defined, oh, this Q is in the next page. If you want it to be sharper, uh, again, you remember the equation for Z here. Uh, Z is the unit circle here, this thing here. Uh, just like your analog circuit design, we can put poles and zeros into this plot. I'll put zeros at 60 hertz. Wherever I've, where, where I've, wherever I've chosen my sampling rate, okay, I'm gonna put 60 hertz and minus 60 hertz. Everything works in complex conjugate pairs. I'll put my zeros there uh, on the unit circle, which will make the gain equal zero, and then I'll put poles really close to it. I'll put poles really close to it. Alpha is some number Where's my alpha? Alpha is some number less than one. It's a design parameter. Theta is a design parameter. So theta and alpha uh, are the two design parameters. Here. Theta chooses the frequency. Alpha chooses the, um, the, how sharp the filter is. And then we can design, here I'm going the other direction. I started with H, right? H is the product of Z minus the zeros divided by Z minus the poles. So for two zeros and two poles, and they're in complex conjugate pairs. So all the I's go away, right? And so you get one minus two cosine theta, Z to minus one, et cetera. Uh, in this particular filter, uh, I've chosen it such that cosine theta is zero, so I get something even simpler. Um, 
And then I do the inverse transform. I, you know, put this guy over there, put that guy over there and just take the inverse transform. This term here arose to that one. This term here arose to that one. This term here arose to that one. And I need one more shape. Uh, squiggle, or the whole thing arose to this one. Um, it doesn't have a, at, at, at DC, right, at Z equals one, it has a gain of that. And so did is I just multiplied the two inputs by one over that. And I got my gain equals one, high Q, notch filter. And now I have one, two, three multiplies, two adds, and a shift. But I got something wonderful, okay? Q is defined to be the center frequency, uh, 60 hertz, over the, the shift in frequency. I think this, this one particular went from like 55 to 65. So this was a, uh, this was a, a Q of six which means it was very sharp. It only cut out 60 Hertz and did not cut out the rest of it. Uh, yeah, let's go on to chapter four. Again, yeah, yeah, okay, we'll show you one more. These are not stop share school. It's this one. Yeah. Um, this is a, uh, you know, that's my fixed point. That's my fixed point um, um, constant. Uh, if I want to sample at whatever, 2000 Hertz, and I want a Q, I don't know, 0.95, alpha 0.95. Um, boom, there's an equation. So it's just, it just goes through all the math we just did in the slide. Um, yeah, adjusting for the, um, yeah, it's, uh, again, not too scary. There's, this one's got five multiplies, one, two, three, four, five, uh, four adds, but this approach to pr producing a 60 Hertz notch filter, uh, is pretty robust in terms of sampling faster than 60 and then cutting it out. Uh, is, is this uploaded? Yeah, I just did it this morning. No. Okay. Yeah, there's a, in, 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 um, in, the files. Uh, I put, the PowerPoint in here, yeah, that one, and I put the the Excel sheets in here. There's a whole bunch of. I won't, I won't bore you with all the. Uh, I I like making digital filters, but in all fairness, it's not this class. So, yeah. questions on that? Questions? Uh, uh, go ahead and look at the test. You know, it's possible I made a mistake, um, but the grades were were awesome. So. Um, Does I that mean you will make the next one hard. I will make the next one clearer. Okay. Oh, right. When I want something very specific, I will do my best to see the trouble is I don't have TAs taking it. Right. Um, uh, yeah. And so I don't have a way to, to, yeah, to normally on a, on a, on a, on a, exam with TAs. Well, Caleb knows. I'd let the TAs look at it and they go, you know, that's not what you meant. Okay. <laughs> you know, because, because in all, in all unfairness, we, uh, we work backwards, right? Um, when we teach, yeah, we, when we give an exam, we start with the answer. We start with what you, what it is I wanted you to know 
and then we get the answer and then we write the question. And so, you know, the pathways are obscure sometimes. All right. All right, so now we're into chapter five. Um, and I don't have, I'm not, I got a short lecture for today. Um, yeah, I don't know why, it's just because I do. But we're, go, we're into chapter five of the book. Um, uh, and so we're going to do the personal area network first. Um, that means, you know, it's not Wi-Fi, I guess. Um, and it falls under this umbrella of the 802.15 uh, 802 is, is sort of the umbrella for the personal area network. And specifically, we're going to start with dot four because that's lab one. Okay. And these were the two platforms for lab one, um, the sub gigahertz, uh, the lowest. Um, if you haven't done lab one, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's go. Let me go to the, let me stop the share here for a moment. Uh, those of you who have done lab one, what is the, uh, for, and speak to the ones who haven't done it and say, what is the most fun part about lab one? The protocol design. Yeah, you get the design. It's really the only lab that's got the design in it. Okay. Other than maybe your project, but the other labs are pretty, you know, here's some, here's some circuits wired up. Here's a circuit that sends text messages make a circuit that receives text messages so yeah so the protocol i do believe is the is the is the fun part of lab one now there are protocols you know for the other ones but they're they're not nearly as fun okay um <clears throat> So we're going to um, we're going to delve into into the sub gigahertz first <clears throat> from a from an overview of the entire chapter. Like I said, um, the entire chapter uh, is 802.15, and there are so many pr protocols in here. We will not do them all. Um, <clears throat> we will do uh, sub gigahertz, and we'll do Bluetooth um, under sub gigahertz is the zigbee um but when they mean non-internet protocol uh they mean personal okay that means you own the entire network right whether you're a company or a a family or a <clears throat> or a, a friend group <clears throat> or you're a farmer um Personal means that you are you are in control of all the actors. Okay, so you now people could be sniffing. So security is not unimportant. It's just that you have the option to specify all the nodes. <clears throat> and since you're not the government, you know you know you're not big pockets. Uh, cost will be an issue. Um, this typically shows up where. Uh, things are either very mobile or very remote, in which case energy um, is the key. Um, and bandwidth is not. Okay, so um, in a typical non <clears throat> internet pr protocol, <clears throat> you don't need to send gigabits, you know, you don't need to send the gigabits per second, right? And you're talking about dozens or hundreds of bits per second or maybe thousands, but not a lot. Uh, we'll see two topologies. Um, uh, a mesh is typically your point to point with multiple points and your star is your master slave, um, master slave topology. Uh, as we saw from the previous chapter, sub gigahertz is one of the long ones. And so we'll, um, you know, we'll, depending upon how much power we stick in it, We'll have a fairly long rate, and like I said, we're going to um, uh, e the chapters focuses on 802.15, and we're going to start with 802.15.4. Okay. I said by clicking the button. There we go. So <clears throat> um, these are the. <clears throat> 
these are the some of the choices for frequency uh, the sub gigahertz depends on where in the world you are um, so uh, we're in North America so we should be um, I don't think I, I don't I think that HC 11 is somewhere else by the way uh, but the the CC 1352R is definitely in this 900 megahertz band. Um, those of you who did lab one know that the uh, sub gigahertz have channels. Um, this is basically, since it's a personal network, we basically gonna find a channel uh, and use it for our, for our wishes. Um, whereas once we get the Bluetooth uh, and the more complicated ones, there are channels, but somewhere in the in the stack somewhere in the layers of of software it will find a channel to use okay uh yeah that would have been a f uh, next time i teach this and we're all over in the maker space i'll make people check out all together and make you hop channels um and like you and those of you who did lab one know i didn't didn't make you and those of you who didn't do it will will know that i will not require you to hop channels um, but I did ask you what in your protocol, what do you do if you lose a packet? Okay. And, and so one of the things you could have done, uh, if you've lost a packet is to increase the power or to switch channels. Of course you need a, you got to switch channels on both, both nodes, right? So it's somewhat of a, somewhat of a fun, um, exercise uh, but you can see it's a fairly low bit rate and so what I've got prepared for you today is these um, uh, four these four three or four uh, modulation techniques okay so and basically I just downloaded it out of Wikipedia but we're gonna talk about modulation today all right <clears throat> um, it's a radio wave, right? And we've, uh, we have talked about, you know, in, uh, encoding uh, information in the, in the wave and letting that wave propagate and then decoding. And so here are uh, three, like I said, three or four different encoding schemes that are used in the sub gigahertz, right? They're used in this, in this, in this protocol. Uh, but they're fairly simple. The first is binary, <clears throat> and we're going to shift the phase, uh, and so therefore it's called phase shift keying. <clears throat> so we're going to, the key means how we've encoded the information, and so we're going to binary phase shift it. Uh, if you look at the phase, if you look at the phase in the, in the, um, in the same complex plane that we that we talked about in the digital filters, right? Um, where, you know, this is the real part and that's the imaginary part. Um, uh, this is got a theta equals zero and this has got a theta equal pi, okay? Uh, zero degrees, 180 degrees, right? Um, so often these phase shifts show where the phases are. And so this represents an encoding, right? An encoding of the, um, the encoding of the, of the information. Now, uh, a very, a very fun illustration uh, around this, around this, let me quit, let me quit this and get rid of my inks and do it again. A very fun way to visualize, uh, what happens here, discard, discard again. Okay, uh, is if I'm outputting a one, think of this as a, a state machine. If I'm outputting a one, and then the next bit is also a one, okay, I stay there, okay. Okay, let's try that again to make this prettier. Yeah, pretty enough. If, I'm, if I output a one and I output another one illustrated here in this part of the curve, okay? 
what can you tell me happens here at the at the at the switch from one bit to another nothing should happen nothing happens it's a smooth continuous signal right cuz you remember you got to you got to pass this signal into the airwaves get it to go but what happens when i go from a 1 to a 0 or from a zero to a one. If you were, if you were to do a, uh, if you were to do a, uh, a Fourier transform, a Fourier transform of this waveform, what would be happening at the, not the box, but in the two circles? What, what, what do we got? Phase change. Yeah, phase change, but, but okay, but in the Fourier transform, yes, there's a, there's a switch in phase. Absolutely. The imaginary part, the imaginary part switched. That's the idea of the phase, right? That's how we're going to decode it. But what frequencies are going to be in the Fourier transform? If you took a Fourier transform of this, you don't just see the carrier wave. Okay. These, uh, these are very dis these are discontinuities. These are very high frequency relative to the bandwidth. These are produce this produces a lot of out of band frequencies. This is uh, this is not that one. This is good. And these are actually kind of bad for uh, for figuring stuff out. Okay, so it's simple. It's got other names: uh, phase shift key, two bit phase shift key, and uh, two two element uh, quad QAM. Okay. Uh, so we're going to look for ways that are that are going to produce less discontinuities. They'll be easier to pass will not radiate into other into other uh, into other bands and will be either easier to decode. Okay. And so the first is the first is uh, obviously to increase the bit the bit rate, the band the data rate, we want to encode more, we want to encode more uh, bits per per baud, right? Per 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 uh, um, you know, per frame. Uh, and so we can, again, this is a, uh, this is the unit circle again. And we've got uh, 45, whatever that's, uh, not yet, 45 degrees, uh, 135 minus 45, and minus 135 degrees. Okay. Pi over four, three pi over, yeah, this is pi over four. Yeah. But um, like I said, you can analyze the, you can analyze the, the, uh, the behavior of this by doing a, 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 by doing a, a sort of like a finite state machine phase shift in any, Anytime you go from one phase to another and you go through the zero, right, to go from one to another, if your pathway goes through zero, that's what causes the discontinuity. So if you look at this four phase and look at, say, going from, uh, look, if you just, if you, if your bit pattern only went from, uh, look, if I got one, zero, zero to zero, one. Okay, you with me? Zero, zero to zero, one. Zero, zero to zero, one is this transfer, okay? It isn't as discontinuous, okay? It isn't as, as ugly as if I were to, okay, so this one is a um, zero, zero, one to one, zero. That's this one, okay? 
That's the second one, D. Uh, zero one to zero one to one zero to one zero. Okay, no, I'm sorry. Zero one. Just did that one. This one. Uh, that's. I'm sorry. This is the B. Sorry. That's the one. So now I'm going to go from one zero to one one. Yeah, it's this one. Let's see. These phase transitions didn't go through the zero. Now, if I were to have plotted these other ones, zero, zero to one, zero, or zero, one to one, one, okay, they would have been really ugly. Okay, I didn't do that one right. Zero. Yeah. Um, and so uh, there was a, a desire to modify this to make these the, to make make the the high frequency discontinuities uh, less. Uh, we wanted more bets, but we didn't want to have as much shifting and much weirdness in the in where the bits shifted, so they offset. Uh, okay, so this is this is still QSP. Okay, uh, this is still QSP, um, and uh, the way they actually implement it is they take they split the bit stream in half and have the odd number of bits, odd number of bits. You know, one, three, five, seven, those bits uh, here. So these are the these are the one, three, five, seven bits. And these are the zero, two, four, six bits. Okay. And then they apply the phase shift key to both of those. And then they add them together, right? So this is the one, so, so the odd bit is one and the even bit is one. And so it becomes a one, one. Um, the, okay, so this must be, this must actually be uh, bit one and bit, two becomes zero one, okay? Uh, but this has, uh, this has some very large discontinuities as you flip both bits at the same time, okay? Here. Um, and so there was a, you know, a trick to still use two, uh, still use four phases, Right, still use 45, 135 minus, st still uses 45, 135 minus 45 and minus 135 phase. But to shift this guy in time, such that if you're going to have two discontinuities, you don't have them at the same time. Okay, that's basically the idea of this offset shift. So if you're going to go from a, um, if you're going to go from a, a 135 down to a 45, right, and you have this big shift, they do it in two steps. They offset it so it shifts over by, it, halfway through, it shifts and then it shifts again. Now it's a little bit harder to decode, but it produces a much less uh, what's the word? A much less um, uh, high frequency. Uh, um, it's easier to pass it in the channel. Uh, it's easier to decode it because it shows up in a in a more reliable way after it's been passed through the two antennas and across the airwaves. And that's called offset quadrature phase shift key. And that's one of the uh, one of the common ones used in this. Um, in this in this band, I think there is a picture of offset shifting. Yeah, here's the offset shift. Okay, does your error go up? Well, okay, it's just like we already we did error. Okay, what causes error? Uh, yeah, let me find up. Let's, let's go to the picture here. No, the error goes down because the output, the received signal, looks more like the like the transmitted signal. See over here. Uh, let's see this one over here. This may be what you transmitted, 
but that's not what you're going to receive. You won't see that. Though that 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 pulse will get lost. I mean, the 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 because of the finite bandwidth of the channel, um, that waveform is not going to be shown in is not going to show up in the receiver, and therefore you're going to have trouble decoding it. So it automatically goes to that square wave. No, that, that okay. The square wave. I'm sorry. There, this is just me downloading various crap from the internet. Okay. The this is the digital waveform. This is the digital pattern, right? Uh, okay. Okay. What? Which one? One thirty-five was. Okay. Where's my? Did I define that yet? One thirty-five. Yeah. Over here. Um, uh, uh, thirty-five. One thirty-five was bit zero one. You see that? So this is bit zero one. Uh, minus forty five. Sorry, minus forty five is bit one zero. Okay, and whenever you flip both bits from one from one uh, you know from one pulse, the you know this is a, so this is the this is the pulse rate here, right? That's that this is that FP, right? One over FP. That's the pulse rate. That's this is the digital representation of the of the waveform. And so yeah, so when you flip a phase such that you flipped both bits. Okay, where's the other one? The other one. Okay, so 45. 45 is one one. All right. So this one here is only flipping one bit, and that's one zero. That's still only flipping one bit. And then this one or that one is the other one, I'm pretty sure. Minus 30, 135. Minus 135 is zero, zero. And that is a one, one. So this one here, see this? This is the bit stream, right? Zero, one, right? Oh, yeah, this is the bit stream. One, 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 zero, one, one, right? The bit stream here is one, one, zero, one. One zero, just an example, right? I'm, you know, it's an example. Okay, that's the bit stream. And when you encode it with a quadrature phase shift key, you have a a sine wave, a cosine wave that goes from a phase of forty five to a phase of one thirty five down to a phase of minus forty five. Um, you know. So is it a hardware that detects phase? I didn't take 445S, so I'm a little... No, it's, it depends on whether it's a software radio or hardware. It's, it's hardware. Yeah, this so is like hardware. It, so like the output, I would send it bits. It would encode it. On the receiving end, it would automatically give me this graph from the sinusoidal waves? Yeah. No, no, not this graph. It's going to give me... You put in this, You put in this bit pattern. Yeah. Right? And you get out that bit pattern. That's the that, that's the idea. We put in a stream of bits. Are you ask? Is it like how? Are you asking how it's demodulated? Yeah, I'm asking how you go from this like the waves to this square wave to the bit. Well, oh, I mean, obviously, all, the, this square wave is not the. This is the modulated square wave. Okay, this is the output wave. So you go from a bit pattern of one one zero one to a phase of forty five to one thirty five to minus 45 to plus 45 to minus 45 to minus 35. This is yeah. the modulation phase. And now in the demodulation phase, yeah, you got to, but the point is before we demodulate, we have to transmit it. Okay. And the problem is this, whenever you flip two bits, right? Whenever you flip one, one to zero, zero, you flip both bits. Whenever you flip zero ones, you know, whenever you go from flip both bits, you get a discontinuity that doesn't get transmitted. And therefore, when you decode it, right, you, when you get this back, it looks like this. And you can't resolve what's happened. And so the trick here is to shift it. Shift the, shift the, remember, this was the uh, odd bits. 
and this was the even bits, you shift the even bit frame such that it doesn't produce two phase shifts at the, in the same, at the same time. It'll only shift one phase at a time, okay? Uh, and that way, uh, the waveform is less discontinuous, it's still a little bit discontinuous, but it is less discontinuous. So you never change both at the same time, right? You've got the in phase, the odd bits, that you're encoding using phase shift and the even bits that you're encoding with phase shift, but you're not shifting both bits at the same time. Uh, it's off the, 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 the even bits are offset shifted. So as you see, as you go from, go from 135 down to minus 45, you do it in two steps, um, which produces less of a, you know, pr produces more of a, you see, if you look at these here, uh, these waveforms here, if you were to plot the arrows, right? I should have put the arrow, should have put the things on here. Okay, 45, 135. Oh yeah, no, 45, that's fine. What arrow is this? I went from 45 to 135. That's this arrow. You with me? Yeah. Okay. What arrow? Well, then this arrow is going back, right? What about this one? We go down to negative 45. Yeah, going down. One zero. See. Okay, and that's going back, right? D, E. So are you just like grabbing the first bit? Like. Okay, I'm trying to give you an intuition as to why this is pretty. Okay. E, let me do one. Let me do one more. That one, 45, this one here, F. You're shifting one bit at a time, but you aren't you sending two bits of information per I am. like with these, all these the, these bits all you know the, the, they're four different phases, right? That's two bits. But I'm offsetting when I'm sending the e even bits from the odd bits. Okay. Oh, I see. And okay. No, I minus see. forty-five to one thirty-five. There's there's F. Okay. And I'm never going I'm never going from one one to zero zero or zeros. Now my my data might have it. My data could have a um yeah, you know, like here, this one, right? My data has a shift of changes both bits in each frame, but I'm because I've shifted the even bits, the phase never shifts, uh, uh, never shifts such that the phase goes through the, goes through, goes through zero. It always goes sort of around the circle, which produces a beautiful output, a much prettier output that is easier to transmit. Okay, what time is it? All right. That's the that's the trick here. Okay, so so you're you're worried about decoding. We'll get there. Okay, but the point is, in order to transmit, uh, in order to transmit, this one had the same problem, right? Look at this one. This one has a has a, has an equally uh, equally bad problem because every every time I change the bit, I got essentially a discontinuity or a high frequency. Uh, a high frequency spike in the spectrum to flip the phase, which takes actually takes a lot of power, by the way, and it and it radiates noise, and it doesn't get transmitted to the other side. It gets lost because that's not in the that's not in the in the frequency band. 
Okay. Um, so if I can send more bits, so these, these encoding techniques are a bunch of, of, of cool tricks. And so what is the basic idea? The basic idea is to, com is to encode more bits into the waveform, but do it in such a way that you don't have discontinuities uh, in your output or limit the amount of discontinuities. Again, here's a, here's a zero, zero going to a zero, one, but it does it in two steps. So the, uh, what you call it, the, 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 the phase shifts aren't, aren't horrible. Yes, and we're going to have to decode, demodulate this in, in, in hardware. It's DSP, but it's still hardware. So the, the, so the basic idea is to have lots more bits, to have many bits in, in per, per, right? This is our frame rate. This is our pulse rate, right? This is one over FP that we talked about in the last chapter, but I want to encode two bits in there, okay? Right, this TS is one over the, is the pulse rate. Okay. Uh, but I want to do it in such a way that this is still a smooth waveform. Uh, let me do one more, it's easy, you'll like this one. How about, do you like this one? Amplitude shift key, uh, yeah, one bit per, yeah, again, this is T. This one should be on the test. Okay, fine. Okay, so if I were to ask you this one on the test, the question would be, um, are there any high frequency components? And if so, where are they? I think you called it TS. It doesn't matter, T. Are there any high frequency components here? Things that won't, won't pass? The transition from zero be, to one? To, to, uh, things that are not, are gonna, things that will be rejected by the, the, by the channel, right? The channel, right? Your, your antenna, your, your transmitter, your, your, your receiving antenna, your receiving amplifier is gonna, is gonna pass a narrow band of frequencies. So what does this look like in, uh, what does this look like in, 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 the, in the receiver? Where, where, are the, where are the high frequency components here uh, that are gonna get lost? Now Austin said it, okay, so say it again, Austin. Oh, uh, the transition. Yeah, right here, these, this. That's very, this is an infinite frequency, okay? These are infinite frequencies right here. So does it still work though? Sure, but it all depends on, on how good your channel is, of course, uh, but it may look, you know, you may see, you may miss this whole first one, right? Okay. Like on the receiving end, I guess, do you need prior knowledge of the encoding to make it accurate? So again, it's non-causal. So it can't, the, the, this side here is going to be different from that side. It can't, what you call it, it can't predict. But, yo, you know, this first one right here is going to get missed. Potentially, depending upon the bandwidth of your, of your signal. It can't, the, the receiver can't abruptly go from a high slope to a zero slope. Yeah, no, it's obviously it works. It's just, you know. Can you not, uh, I mean, apply a, um, like a Gaussian window or a, or, uh, yeah, yeah, this is a window to. Yeah, sure. You want to, you want to window this. Yeah, sure. This is, these are window. Yeah. To remove these spikes. Sure, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Um, okay, I think I'm actually done with, yeah. So let me summarize 
what I was trying to get out of this is, is if you've got a bitstream here that you either encode it as phases or amplitudes in the waveform, right? And the problem is uh, changing anything right and changing anything causes high frequency changing anything causes discontinuities which are high frequency components of your attempted transmitted signal okay uh, and so you want to develop more and more sophisticated modulation techniques to allow you to send the same number of bits, but send it in such a way. Look, I mean, I just compare the these two figures here, right? Is the same information. I forget what the, uh, yeah, zero, zero, yeah. These information, the, these two signals here are the same four bits, okay? The same four bits, zero, zero, one, one. But the bottom one is prettier. And what I mean is that uh, it has let, you know, it does not have high frequency components in your attempted transmitted, which means that your signal is in the, is in the, ba in the baseband. The signal is in the, in the sweet spot of where you're supposed to be transmitting and where your receiver can receive. And so transmitting this offsetted, this is, a, this is obviously the offset uh, Q. P S K and this is the Q P S K uh, allows you to uh, improve the error rate because your waveform that you received is way closer than than you than closer to what you've transmitted. This one will be more distorted. So any modulation technique that causes dis that causes high frequencies is going to show up received as distorted that's the that is the big point and, and there are literally hundreds of these modulation techniques okay um and what you want to do is to make it more reliable is to have the allow you to change the bits without inducing discontinuities in the waveform that are hard to transmit and therefore hard to uh that aren't received all right. Uh, yeah, we're go, we'll talk more about. Yeah, we got a couple more lectures on uh, on the sub gigahertz, but these are modulation techniques. Uh, yeah, I wish I had my high speed scope, and we'd show. Are it we to gonna you. Are we gonna discuss demodulation? Well, not a well. lot because I'm not very good at it. We'll mention it, but we won't. Yeah, it's not something that I'm really good at. Uh, yeah. It's, um let's see uh, demodulation no, probably not us not not to the extent to which would you know, if I do it it'll bore you yeah no probably yeah okay um, but you know as far as a test is I could I could invent I could give you a couple of new ones and you know, like an obvious one here is can you, could you combine these two? Could you combine this and that? Not, not exactly this one, because this one's kind of stupid, but. What do you mean this and that? Uh, can you, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. This is amplitude shift key. Okay, uh, what the, one of the problems with this goes to a Valvano rule, and remember the Valvano rule is uh, how is how is information transmitted? What fundamental physical property is required to transmit information? Energy. Energy. 
uh, how much energy is transmitted when you send a zero? Zero. I can hear nothing. Nothing. So how might you change this to make me happy? Make it a smaller amplitude. Yeah. Two different amplitudes, a big one and a small one. Okay. Um, Wait, yeah. I thought you would like that. That you're not using energy. Oh no 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 no! You can, if you don't use energy, you can't transmit. No. Yeah, but if there's nothing at that voltage, then the difference between the two amplitudes is the max it possibly could yes, be. Yes. Okay. So that's why people do this. But they, yeah, you know, same same people who invented I squared C. You know, they uh, thought it was a good idea until they. Um, well, the whole point is the reason why you don't like that is I want to combine, I, I want to send eight bits, right? This, there's a bit here, right? You see it? There's a bit per frame. Uh, over here, there are two bits per frame. Could I, could you get me three bits per frame? Would your error rate go up or do you just trust the hardware can pick up all this? Your stuff? error rate always goes up. Yeah, that, 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 was the, okay, that was the essence of the Shannon channel capacity theorem. All right. All right. So let's go back and, you know, uh, yeah, the digital filter. Where to go? No, this one. Yeah, absolutely. What? You, you don't trust your hardware. What do you know about? What do you know about the, your your ability to transmit? What is allowing me to encode more bits? What is allowing me to encode more bits per frame? SNR. SNR. Okay. SNR is is, is empowering me to send more bits per pulse. So what's the theoretical maximum? I that's guess we the, that's, that's, the, that's the essence of the channel channel capacity. That is the theoretical maximum of the a bit of the bit rate. Oh, so it's per frequency? Like it's different per frequency? Well, it's different for there are two things that can affect your 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 ability to to send data. Bandwidth of the channel, that's B. Right? So if you could increase the bandwidth of your channel, you can send more data. And the others, you can reduce noise. Uh, how do you increase signal? Increase amplitude. more power. Yeah, more power, better antenna, right? Uh, better transmit antenna, better receive antenna, more power. Uh, you know. What, what's defined you know. as noise then? Ooh, okay, great. Where does the noise come from? Is that like when you? Where does it get, so where does the noise come from? That's a great. That's a great. Uh, we we saw one noise here. Power lines. Yeah, uh, electromagnetic field pickup. Uh, other people, you know, you op open up your open up your you know your 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 Bluetooth app on your phone or your and look at or we'll open up your Wi-Fi. You know, let's see. I, 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 did, I do this all the time. Um, uh, there are literally sitting here in suburban Austin. Uh, there are at least ten to twelve Wi-Fi hotspots in um, from my lair here in in Austin. Okay. Now there aren't that many Bluetooth devices. Why? That's a great question. I mean, that's your house. Yeah, because it's it's a Bluetooth is it's is shorter range than Wi-Fi. Okay, so I can't see the neighbor's Bluetooth devices unless I go knock on their door. Okay, but all the other things cause noise. Uh, so field pickup, electromagnetic field pickup power lines, all, uh, other people using Wi-Fi space. Can mesh Wi-Fi interfere with Bluetooth? Okay, now you're... Mm. It's a very specific... Okay, I installed a mesh Wi-Fi router in my room, and I have noticed that my Bluetooth PlayStation yeah, sure. controller 
mm -hmm. has been disconnecting. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. Did I show? Did I did I show you the the the, the frequencies yet? Okay. We, we'll get to there. Absolutely. They're in the same frequency band. They are. Oh, I don't know about mesh. But Bluetooth and Wi-Fi are in the same are in the same frequencies. Oh, Jackson says Bluetooth and they're both four. Point. Okay. So that's the reason that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm past my time. Um, yeah. So yeah, have a good weekend. Um, yeah. Like I said, I'm going to be sending text messages before the, yeah. See, so there's lots of, and so the whole point is we want to go in you know, jack, you know, is you want to, you want to change frequencies. You want to get out of the, you know, we we have uh, whatever one of those cordless phones that ran in the same frequency as something else, and so we bought a new cordless phone and got the cordless phone to be in another spot. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, it's a crowded world. This is kind of uh, I don't know if it's going to cover the scope, but um, so the FCC regulates. Um, certain parts of the bandwidth and isn't 2.4 gigahertz unregulated. Okay, now there you go. Uh, I'm not sure to answer your question, but um, there's a bunch of stuff in there. That's why we can do labs at 900 megahertz, is 914, wherever we were. It's because I guess, uh, if I were to come up with a new Bluetooth device, do I need to send it to the FCC? if it doesn't have any cellular capability? No, no, that's what I mean. This, um, this, uh, you know, this CC1350, you can create your own protocol in the 2.4 gigahertz range, absolutely. Now, when you go to sell it, you gotta make sure you're not, you know, you, you're gonna have to make sure you're not um, outside of the range you're supposed to be in. Yeah, no, it's uh, you know, it's uh, uh, that's the essence of this entire uh, whatever tw twelve-step uh, regulation. So that 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 IEEE fifteen point four covers the two point four gigahertz range, and it's got a whole bunch of crap in there. Anyway, um, yeah, so we're going to we're going to continue our sub gigahertz see if I can't find you some waveforms to look at and um, yeah, just uh, again, everything changes. So, uh, what I want you to get out of this lecture is not the details on any specific protocol because it's already obsolete, uh, but what are the fundamental principles that affect its behavior, right? And so again, modulation is we want to send a lot of bits, but we want to have a smooth signal, right? That that fits in our base band, that fits in our bandwidth of our channel. And is reliably decoded, of course. But all right, so have a good weekend. Yeah, so see you on Tuesday. Uh, it's Wednesday, right? No.